We got a fish. Oh. <laughs> it's just like pulling a sack of cement, isn't it? <laughs> oh. Looks like a grouper. Seeing that pale kind of yellow color. Oh. I'm fighting the fish and the current, trying to get it up behind the boat here. Let's get a look at it. Woo. Oh, man. I'd say that's maybe five and a half feet long. So we caught two fish at the same time. These guys say that isn't unusual. Once we get the first bite, then other grouper can sense what's going on, and they'll come in and feed as well, creating a feeding frenzy. So check out this mouth. And what you can see immediately, it's not like a shark with sharp, jagged teeth. On the upper and lower jaw are pads of needle-like teeth that are pointed backward. So if I put my finger in its mouth and try to pull my finger out, it grips. So that's exactly what would happen to prey that ended up in a grouper's mouth. They can open their mouth very, very, very wide. The grouper will suck in prey, clamp down, and use those teeth to grip on the prey and then swallow the prey whole. So this is an important clue. Groupers are not biting and ripping apart prey like a shark. They're sucking it in and swallowing it whole. Which makes total sense now that I know grouper eat mainly small fish and crabs, hardly the diet of a ferocious monster. It's a recapture. So this is a fish that these guys have already caught and tagged once. OK, tag number 96F. Two five zero eight. Got it. What do the tags and recaptures tell you about the fish's movement patterns? If we're recapturing this fish over and over again, that means that they're likely residents because they have a very strong sight fidelity. They don't move a lot during most of the time of the year. So that's an important clue. Goliath grouper aren't like sharks, patrolling large expanses of ocean looking for prey. They'll find a wreck or reef they like and make that their home. Unstrap it first. Yep. Everything's out of it. Straps off. Good. See you later. Wow. <laughs> <laughs>